what is up welcome back design squad and in this video i'm going to show you how to make a simple data range picker where you would as a user be able to select the starting date and the end date in let's say uh, a context of trips booking or like a hotel booking or any other administrative task where you would need to select a range of dates now the caveat here is that you must view an episode i think number 92 from before because we're gonna build on top of that and we're gonna hack it there is some of the things we use from the repeaters basically with a data set as you get item loaded and all the uh, kind of like a values and interaction patterns and the structure we're gonna reuse it entirely because there is a lot of work already done and set up and I'm gonna quickly run through what I'm gonna do. And so you better watch that video if you wanna be up to speed and know what's going on. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So I'm really quickly gonna just create a duplicate of a page. Immediately what I'm gonna need to do is really duplicate this field of the dates, obviously, because we need a starting date and the end date. So I'm gonna maybe call it return and here departure or something like that. Imagine that this is booking for a plane journey or something along those lines. And I'm probably gonna also reduce the size of these because I know that we might end up with a lot of text, especially if we're gonna add a numerical value for our month. And what's missing, quiz time, think about what's missing. Missing is the global variable. Of course, we need a global variable for that new value, that text. And so I'm gonna go ahead in our global variables from a project tab and just create date value two and just add return for clarity's sake like so and I'm gonna also add the value of zero. As simple as that, we're gonna jump into our behaviors. And if you remember in a previous video, we have a few different actions here, which is basically if I select it, we do that, we do set it to active, we set it, as you can see, we check if it's false first and foremost, which is unselected, then we set the value of a variable and so forth. And if I select three, as you can see, it became active. For simplicity's sake, one thing what I want to hack first and foremost is because we added to a value of variable our text addition, just gonna take it out like so and just gonna keep it a simple number for the time being I can always add it to set text value date value we would set text go into our functions value like variable like so and just add the plus like that so we are basically instead of attaching it to a value of variable we're adding it in a set text field and the result is gonna be exactly the same as before Boom, pretty good. If you think about it, what would be next step is basically adding that return date, right? What I'm gonna do next is set the value of a variable. We're not gonna be able to see it because it's off the screen, but it was there in a list. Just look for set variable value, set, because that's where we, our gatekeeper, as you can see here, false. We just need to set it to true because now we are completed. We added that value to it. It's simple as that and off the back of that, what I'm gonna do next is just copy in all that statement as a copy and we're gonna tweak it based on the return value just to keep it super simple. Just for simplistic case, let's just say return as well. What I'm gonna do is just keep else if because it's one or the other, so that's important here. And data set, we're just gonna set that it's true because we want to be able to check that first the first departure date is set and then the next one. And there are a few things what I'm gonna tweak. For example, update rows, I can push it down below. We don't need it yet, but what we can do is set panel state D1 to active. That's correct, we do definitely need that. Value of a variable, data value, no. So this is something we need to tweak. And so we need to tweak into value return because it's another case, as you can see, it's almost polar opposites. Then set text, again, we need to override the value of this and I can just write it down, just need to keep the syntax correct. And then I can update the rows because that's what's gonna push the global repeater and update all the objects. But here, the last statement, before we come back to update the rows, we just need to set it to false because now we basically create a loop so 
if it falls here in the end of that statement, we are basically telling Axure that, hey, now we are ready to add a new value if the user wants to, for example. If we would preview, you're gonna see that there is a bit of a stuff happening, but not exactly what we want. Because if I set September 2, let's say, that puts it in pretty well. But if I select next one, it just overrides the same. And I know exactly why it's the case, because I didn't update this date value text field into the second field, which I didn't even give a name. So that's amateur mistake. Just maybe need to say date return for that as a name and just say instead of date value, which is first value, second value. So we just set that and that should be sort of there, but not entirely there. So we're gonna set departure date, we're gonna set the return date, but as you can see, they don't stick around anymore. We are saying for it to update the rows with active states, but the repeater itself doesn't know that. So we need to click out and we need to select the repeater. We need to enable cases here, just click OK. So the first statements, which we have from a previous video, from previous tutorial, stays the same. So we can just add another case where we're gonna say, uh, set active start or something like that. So the first date is going to set to active and set panel state D1 into active. Simple as that. But now it's just would make everything active because we're not yet checking which value. So here I'm going to add logic. If the selected value of this is quite critical, but if you go to functions and insert variable or function, you should find this item dot date in the repeater, it comes from that repeater data set. You can just select OK. So we're saying if that value equals to value of variable data value, then set it to active. So this would set it to active like so. And then I can also replicate one for our end date value, yada, 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 value of variable return like so. And just rename for clarity's sake return here. Another thing is just toggle to if they could kick off a separate functions basically. And now if we would preview that, we're gonna see that at least we are marking the two. And this is super important because if you remember in actual cell of the repeater, we already set it to set it to active. Why do we need to set it again? That's a bit of a redundancy and we can come back and clean it up basically later. But it's important to take out that behavior outside the repeater and attach it to one to repeater as a component as it updates the rows. That's super important. What we are missing though before we go back and clean it up is the in between days because if you have a range, you care what's in between the two points as much as the two points itself, right? We need another case basically. And that's almost is gonna be clarifying everything for you. And I think it's all gonna come together so you understand it better. But if we add another case, we almost need to now do one thing, which is basically double check the starting value and value and tell actual whatever is in between mark it off with a certain color let's say, or a certain state in this case, because we already predefined that. If you see my outline right here, as you can see, I have free state, which is default, active and in between state, which we defined from a previous video. But now let's just add that case. And that's going to be case four, I think. And I noticed that in latest actually, it doesn't really matter how you name it anymore. It's still kept as different entities. So it doesn't really matter, which is great. But let me just call it, let's say, check in betweeners and let's add logic we say value again we're gonna check each cell item dot date equals well in this case it would equal we want to check if it's uh, greater than value of variable of value i also want to check another one which is basically what's less than the max the top the second value is less than value of variable return. And really what we're doing here is telling it that, hey, if the value of that item dates within the repeater range is less than, is actually more than starting date and less than the end date, then color them or do something with them, which I'm gonna add soon enough. As you can see now, we can just add action and set panel state D1 to in between. 
let's basically preview and see if that actually works out in the end and if we actually can get range now. So let's say if the starting date is 9th and the finish date is 18th, boom! Now we have the range. Let's say gonna restart to 23rd to 26th, boom! It's there as well. And there's a little bit of a glitch as you can see, so if I select 2nd and 12th, it kind of reloads. So we, you almost would maybe need to have a think of how do you reset it. What does happen when you select another 2 and another 12 here? Like how do you reset those values for example? What could we do? Well, one way to do this is to really, before we update the rows here when it's false because we always close that loop, is to reset the variables. You can reset it in many ways. What I like to do is just set variable value, value to let's say uh, zero or something like that and push it up before everything starts and then also another one to that. So now it resets both of those values in the beginning or each, each term when we reset the loop and let me show you if that actually works out. Let's see if that happens. 10 and 11th, and if I 16 and 26 or 4th and 13th, and boom, now we have a range. Of course, we can take it in so many different ways. You could also add, you know, a flip for different calendar months. You could also, for example, add a reset button or something like that. So you can clear the values for the user or add some sort of, you know, hide this calendar and only activate it. If, for example, I click on that and it activates or maybe it's two different calendars side by side and it, they all connect in the range. It's really up to you how you want to skin this cat. There are so many ways to make it even more awesome. And you can just go ahead and explore of how you could do that. And so I hope this is useful. There was a lot of ask for me to cover this. This is the simplest version I could think of. You could go above and beyond to make us even more smarter. And I challenge you to do so. If you like this video, as per usual, give a like, subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned for more material. And on that note, I'll see you next time.